So thanks for having me at TEDx San Diego, where ideas and latrines are worth spreading. <laughs> but stereotypes and uh, cancer definitely are not. And uh, if you can't tell, that's actually what my talk is on. Uh, so my big idea is actually universal cancer screening. And this is what I uh, did as my PhD, and I, I formed a company off of it. So uh, the goal is to actually take a single drop of blood and within 15 minutes, uh, using the process that I'll be describing, be able to isolate the cancer biomarkers that allow you to identify whether or not you have cancer early when you can actually have uh, much better uh, survivability as well as uh, much lower costs. It saves a lot of lives, and it's about $50 billion right now, but the costs keep growing in an exponential manner. And so this is actually going to have a huge impact. So let's see. Let's talk cancer. So most of the people here uh, either know somebody uh, who's had cancer or unfortunately has had to go through it themselves. So you, you know, I can sort of skip through most of these uh, facts, but the idea is that it caused about a quarter of all deaths worldwide. It's the uh, number one killer now. It was projected to pass heart disease in 2010. Still number two in the United States, but number one if you include everywhere in the world. It costs $100 billion in direct costs in the United States alone. If you take indirect costs, which is you know, time loss, you're looking at about twice as much, so you're looking at $300 billion total. And that's you know, uh, quite a bit of money when you're looking at this. And uh, the most important thing to actually note here is the fact that you know, while everyone is having a discussion right now over Congress and the debt and all of that, the main projected part of the debt that's actually supposed to be so dangerous is actually Medicare, because Medicare is actually soaring through the roof. And the reason why is because, uh, and there was a study that came out in 2002 uh, by the US government where about 25% of Medicare recipients are using 85% of the total actual usage of it. And these are usually patients in chronic diseases. Uh, and on a per patient basis, cancer is actually the most expensive thing, and it's uh, projected to increase at an exponential manner. So this is something that you definitely want to keep in mind. The reason why this is occurring is because it's actually detected too late. So this is a slide that's used by Dr. Dennis Carson of the Morse Cancer Center at uh, San Diego. And the main idea behind it is you have a single cell, it becomes malignant, and it just goes through the prol proliferation of uh, cancer, where it goes from one cell to two to four, and so on and so forth. And so this is actually considered stage zero. It's about 60% of the lifespan of the tumor, and we can't detect it right now. But if you can treat it here, you actually have tremendous impact. Uh, this is where you have your cancer cells get to about a million cells. Then when you get to about a billion cells, it gets to about stage one where it's palpable. So this is where if you have breast cancer, for instance, you feel a lump, or you know, you'll usually go in for other reasons. Let's say you broke your leg and they did an x-ray and all of a sudden they found a little tumor there. But you're not really showing any symptoms. It's completely asymptomatic at this point. Stage two is where it gets to regional disease, and stage three is where it gets uh, closer to metastatic disease, where it's now spreading all throughout your body. And so this is actually the primary area where it starts uh, showing symptoms. So stage four is where it gets to metastatic disease, where it's now fully all over your body, uh, and uh, this is where it causes death, uh, usually. And your prognosis is the worst at this point in time. So uh, the issue with having most of the cancers detected here is that here is, uh, in stage two and stage three, is where you're actually uh, you know, coughing up blood, or you start bleeding profusely and it won't stop, or you have blinding headaches, for instance, if you have brain cancer, unexplained stomach pain, things like that. And then you go to the doctor and they actually identify it okay. But by that time, it's already spread everywhere. What you want to do is just move it slightly above. You want to detect cancer in the stage zero, stage one phase, where your survival rate for virtually every cancer is greater than 90%. So find it when it's early. And so uh, you know, a cynic in here might be saying, well, why, you know, who cares about detecting it early? You have the same type of drugs, and uh, what are you going to do with that? Well, there's too many issues why. I mean, leaving even toxi uh, toxicity aside of the uh, chemotherapy drugs, which are the uh, drugs that they actually give you throughout your body to try to reduce the tumor or to get rid of it altogether, uh, you have roughly a 50% efficacy uh, in, across all diseases of using a specific drug. But in cancer by itself, you're looking at 25% efficacy. So uh, this is uh, something that two years ago, uh, Greg Lucier, who was the CEO of Life Technologies, had a nice speech where he said, four out of five patients, your first round of chemotherapy does absolutely nothing. It just poisons you. So you have four to six weeks. At the end of that six weeks, they then take a CT scan. They go, what is this? You know, it didn't work. And then they'll put you on some other drug. So it's very important that we actually combat it from the prevention side and the diagnostic side at the beginning, rather than the cure side. You know, there is no magic pill because cancer is a million different diseases. But luckily, uh, there is a way of being able to identify it, and that's what we've uh, done ourselves. And the reason why it costs so much and you have all of these issues is because of ineffective detection. 
And so this actually takes me to a story that my professor likes to tell everybody. So you have a drunk uh, who's looking for his keys uh, in the middle of the night, you know, there's, and he's looking for it under a lamppost. And a policeman comes over and he goes, well, what's going on? He, he, why are you looking for your, uh, you know, and he says, I'm looking for my keys. And so the policeman gets down on all fours and searches with the drunk, but they can't find the keys. And so he gets up and says, I don't see the keys anywhere under the lamppost. Well, you know, where did you lose them? He says, over there in the corner. But uh, so he asks, why are you looking over here? Well, that's where the light is. And that's the biggest issue. Right now, we don't know where to look, so we look based off of the uh, markers that we have. So you have, for instance, uh, digital rectal exam as well as uh, PSA markers for prostate cancer, which any man over the age of 50 will tell you he dreads. He has to go through once a year. You know, it's the same thing for breast cancer where you're going through mammograms. It's the, uh, it's the exact same issue as well if you're doing x-rays or trying to identify. Is that a spot? Is that a shadow? Is that a tumor? How do you actually identify? It's the same thing for after therapy. Is it actually exist? So we have a very um, awful method of being able to tell, uh, with the exception of, for instance, skin cancer. And so this is a model that's actually pretty good where you know, it has a very high uh, um, uh, rate of having people have it, but it does not have a correspondingly high mortality rate. And the reason why is you, know, you go, what the heck is that? And you look at it, you look, you know, and you take it to the doctor, and then you go, he t removes it, removes the area around it, and that's it. So the goal is to actually find something like that everywhere in your body. And if you can do that, then it actually is a pretty powerful tool. So we're looking somewhere, right, based off of the tools we have. What we need to do is actually look everywhere, illuminate everything. So what you want to do is be able to isolate and identify this. So this is a specific quote from uh, Dr. Leland H. Hartwell, who's a Nobel Prize winner in uh, medicine physiology. He says, for uh, me, the biggest payoff in cancer research is the d discovery of biomarkers uh, measured in blood that reflect the uh, early stage cancer. And for nearly all cancers, early detection means a cure. So we have the cure already. We just need to find it early. So what do you need for early detection? It's basically two things. You need a blood-based biomarker that exists for virtually every cancer you're looking at, and you need technology to isolate and detect this biomarker. So the way this actually works nicely is that cancer is, causes unnatural cell death. So if you're looking at, uh, let's say, DNA of cell, it's a blueprint. So if you have a bricklayer, for instance, and your cells are bricks, he's basically putting together bricks into a nice little house in normal, right? And then you have uh, very little, uh, if you have death, it's in a controlled manner. Uh, cancer is basically a lazy bricklayer. And so he's going to basically pile it all together as quickly as possible into a mountain. So you get a mountain of bricks, and it's going to have a lot of shattered bricks and a lot of pieces of bricks floating around. In the same way, you actually have these uh, uh, pieces of the, the cells, which is the DNA floating around in your bloodstream. So this biomarker, cell-free DNA, works for every single cancer because it's cancer's Achilles heel. For every single cancer, it, basically the definition is it's a cell that divides uncontrollably. So while it's dividing, it's not able to provide enough nutrients and enough uh, 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 oxygen, for instance, to the cells, and the cells explode and they release this big chunks of DNA. So if you were to isolate this DNA then, you're actually able to do a variety of things with it. You're then able to look at sequencing, methylation, mutations, what type of drug is correct for you, whether or not you have cancer, where that cancer is located, and all sorts of other very important and interesting things for this. So this is actually the, uh, the very good biomarker that's actually gaining a lot of prominence. There's almost a thousand papers now. And it's been shown for every single cancer uh, that they've tested on it so far. So how do you actually isolate it? That's the second issue. And that's where the technology comes in. So we actually have a technology. And don't be alarmed if you don't actually see anything here. You're not supposed to. This is a normal serum sample run through our AC microelectrode array. You can see nothing there. This is a cancer patient sample. So you can see the self-recirculating DNA, which is these rings. Each of these rings are microelectrodes that are 80 microns in diameter. They're about a width of a human hair. There's a 1,000 of them in there in any single system. And you run it through. And it's very cheap, it's very fast, and easy to use. And this is how it actually works. Take a single drop, take 15 minutes. Uh, there we go. And you have uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, and uh, high molecular weight DNA, for instance. So each one of the uh, yellow circles is actually your uh, microelectrode ray. You turn on the electric field. The cells will actually move away from the electrodes. At the same time that this is occurring, the DNA will move directly on the electrodes. And the DNA is seen here in green. And this is basically all automated. All you have to do is insert the drop of blood and push a button, nothing else. When you have the fluidic wash, you have your DNA left over, all your cells have moved away, and you can keep the cells if you want to identify them, or you take the DNA. You amplify and genotype it. So here's actual results in normal and cancer serum samples. You're going to see that this is basically the case for every single thing we've tested so far. Excuse me. So you're looking at normal samples look like that. This is breast cancer serum sample, colorectal, pancreatic, and prostate cancers. We've also done this for lung cancer, a variety of other cancers as well. And you can see these bright green rings that actually show up in these different cancers that don't exist in normal. 
And so this is the DNA that's actually floating around your blood. So if you can isolate it, then you can do uh, major identification with it. So we can say, you know, getting back to the main point, we can save these lives through both early detection as well as the costs. And so just to give you an idea of this, this is a chart giving you incidence, mortality, and spread. So if you were to, uh, as well as uh, survivability, sorry. So if you look at cancer when it's spread, your survival rate is in some cases 3% uh, to 4% for the four major cancers. But if you find it early when it's localized, you're looking at a survival rate that's closer to you know, 100% for prostate cancer, almost 100% for breast, and so on and so forth. So this is actually a pretty powerful method of being able to isolate and identify. In the same time, this is a chart showing you from 1960 to 2008. So this isn't even taking 2010 costs, which is now over $100 billion. $89 billion, you can see an exponential growth that goes all the way up. Uh, and this is a major concern, actually. So how do you save lives, and how do you put a price on being able to breathe without pain? Well, if you can identify it early, you don't actually have to do any of that stuff. It's a surgical precision move where you remove the tumor rather than a carpet bombing, which is what we do now with chemotherapy and radiation, trying to actually reduce the tumor so that they can then go in with surgery to try to cure it. If you do something like this for early detection, you're looking at a reduction of over half, so over $50 billion you're going to be able to save just on cost alone, and you can slow down this growth rate. Uh, as you guys are probably familiar, you know, United States is also having an aging population. So this is something that's, you know, more prominent because the older you are, the more the chances of cancer because it's, uh, it's a disease of mutation. So in this manner, you can actually save lives as well as uh, save a lot of people uh, a lot of money. Uh, you're looking at over 90% less costs, actually, if you find cancer in stage one versus stage four for virtually every cancer as well. So cancer is complicated, but it's not invincible. All you have to do is find it early. 